A few months ago, I began responding to an appearance uh, on the Dean Show uh, of a former youth minister. And I began responding to the ten top reasons that they put together why Jesus cannot be God. We only got through a ten, nine, and eight, and now we pick up with number seven. Number seven, talk to me, brother. Number seven is this concept was not taught by Jesus or his disciples, nor was it believed in by his followers and uh, the early followers of Christianity. As we see when, when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls in Qumran, we see that the early Christians were still a part of Judaism. A little bit of a problem. Um, <laughs> the Dead Sea Scrolls are from before the time of Christ, and of course the Qumran community is from before the time of Christ as well. And uh, so the idea that they're somehow relevant to determining what early Christian belief was um, is not only anachronistic, but it's a real, real far stretch. I suppose uh, almost any theory under the sun has been proposed about the Qumran community and things like that. Someone may have tried to associate with Christianity, but there's significantly better data as to the nature of early Christian belief. Uh, in fact, uh, you have not only archaeological evidence, but you have the documentary evidence of books like the Didache and Clement and uh, Ignatius. And uh, it's going to be sort of sad to hear Joshua Evans, this alleged former Christian. Again, um, we've documented so many times that quote-unquote former Christians who become Muslims um, never knew almost anything about their former faith. And then their beliefs get even stranger once they become Muslims and they start trying to refute their former faith. And so we're going to hear really one of the most confusing and confused presentations on early church history I think I've ever heard. Uh, we're going to hear him saying that nobody came up with the doctrine of the Trinity until the Council of Nicaea. Uh, but then he says that it came from Paul. Uh, Paul was martyred around 64 AD, so how exactly does that work? So he's going to blame Paul for everything. I'm not going to give us any evidence, of course, but he's going to blame Paul for everything. Very common. Um, and then we're, we're going to be told that the, in the first two centuries that the followers of Jesus were just like the Jews, and they didn't believe in the deity of Christ, despite how many clear cases and documentation we've already presented through our various videos, uh, but certainly Ignatius uh, at least ten times, more than ten times, referring to Jesus Christ as our God. He dies in 108, 107, 108 in that time period. Uh, just just completely ignoring the reality of, of history itself and jumbling everything together. Let's, uh, let's listen to what he has to say. For instance, when, if you read the book of Acts, when Jesus Christ had, had, had departed from this earth, the, the disciples still uh, daily attended the synagogue. They still daily went to the temple of Jerusalem and worshipped as the Jews worshipped because this is what Jesus Christ brought. He brought the renewal of the laws of Moses. So if the disciples were running around teaching people that Jesus was God, they would have been banished out of the temple the day they walked in or they would have started their own church. But no, neither did Jesus. Jesus went to the temple himself. He did not build his own church anywhere and say worship me. He went to the temple and worshiped God in the same way that Moses worshiped God, the same way that Abraham worshiped God, the same way that David worshiped God, the same way that Zechariah worshiped God. You know, he did the exact same thing and his disciples followed him. And if you look at the first, second century Christians, they did the same thing. The, 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 the people of Qumran, the first disciple who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were also a part of Judaism. They considered themselves Judeans, uh, uh, practicing Jews mm -hmm. who followed Jesus as their prophet. So we see that nothing had changed. This whole concept of Trinity did not come about until the third century of the church, and it was not formulated as a doctrine that must be believed in until 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea, when um, all of the bishops and the, and the, and the scholars of Christianity would started to reform into Christianity after Paul came together and said, okay, this is a doctrine that we must believe in. And the first person to expound this doctrine was Paul who never saw Jesus Christ himself, never walked with him, never talked to him, never saw him, never ate with him, never learned from him. It was something that he formulated off a vision that he said he had while he was on the road to Damascus to actually persecute Christians. So this was, he was the first person to ever come up with this title of Christian, ever come up with this title of Trinity, ever come up with the Godship of Jesus Christ or only begotten son. All of these things came with Paul the Apostle. 
is the word Trinity ever mentioned in the Bible? It does not exist. And there's only one verse that even barely mentions it. It's First John 5 and 7. And there are three that bear record on earth, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And there are three bear record heaven, the blood, the water. And But if you go and research that verse, almost all biblical scholars have ex removed that verse from the Bible because it is not a verse that was ever in the Bible. If you go get a, reverse, a revised standard version of the Bible, a new standard version of the Bible, all of those have removed that verse because it is explicitly not a part of the Bible. It is not found in any manuscript before 1200. God is one, not three in one. Worship Him alone. We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth, that He cannot be a man. The top ten reasons why Jesus, peace be upon Him, cannot be God. We are Okay, so many errors packed into, into one presentation. Um, said that the Christians daily attended synagogue. Well, they started being cast out of synagogue as early as before the time of Christ, uh, before the death of Christ, according to the Gospel of John. Um, they would go into synagogues to preach, uh, but they would very quickly be cast out as they were. Why? Well, um, he made reference to the book of Acts. Acts 9.20, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Uh, not exactly uh, commensurate with his theory, but uh, it's, it's right there. Uh, we are told that Jesus brought the renewal of the law of Moses. Really? Um, where do you get that? Uh, we weren't told. It was just sort of thrown out there. Uh, we were told that first and second century Christians did the same thing. He again identified the Qumran community as a Christian community. Uh, it wasn't. Um, he ignores all the evidence of the first and second centuries regarding G the, the universal belief that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, maybe he's thinking of, of a sect like the Nazarenes or something. I, sp I suppose that's possible. But he didn't say that. Who knows? Um, hard to say when you're just throwing stuff out like that. Uh, then we are told that the Trinity did not come out to come the third century of the church uh, and then formulated the Council of Nicaea. But then we were told that the first person to expound this doctrine was Paul. Well, Paul's in the first century, and so uh, he's contradicting himself rather obviously here. Uh, we, we were told that, Je that uh, Paul never saw or talked with Jesus. Um, you know, what if I said that Muhammad never saw or talked to Gabriel? Um, you have more evidence in regards to Paul's conversion, more historical evidence, closer to the time, more rooted in the history of the time. You have much more of that for Paul's conversion to Christianity and his vision of Jesus than you have anything for Muhammad. But you believe Muhammad, but you won't believe Paul. Why? Because Muhammad, being ignorant of Paul, contradicted Paul. This is why I just don't accept Islam's arguments because they're backwards. You have to start backwards to be able to figure this stuff out. Um, anyway, uh, we were told that Paul was the first person to go up with the title of Christian. Actually, that was a um, insult, and it came by people outside the Christian faith at Antioch. Had you know, uh, it wasn't Paul came up with it. First person to come up with the Trinity. Well, it, you know, uh, not quite true. Um, but again, if you are saying that, then Paul did that in the first century and the third century. What about all the people in the first and second century after Paul? You know, that doesn't make any sense. And uh, he was first for to come up with the only begotten son. Actually, that's John uh, that utilizes that terminology, uh, not the apostle Paul. And so, as we have now looked at reasons 10, 9, 8, and 7 by a former youth minister... Uh, we once again discover that the Islamic arguments uh, that seemingly were good enough to convince someone to become a Muslim uh, are not very good arguments at all. And um, it really does make you wonder, again, as I've listened to Yusuf Estes, as I've listened to most people who show up on the Dean Show, their arguments just don't stand up to examination. And when people who claim to have once been a part of your religion and have now converted cannot even coherently present an argument um, that accurately represents their former faith, well, it definitely makes you wonder about uh, what their former faith was really all about to begin with. Thanks for watching. We'll continue with uh, point number six uh, as the Lord gives us time.